So here with us today is Nicholas Dirksen, class of 2006, who is the Director of Legislative Affairs with the Ohio Department of Higher Education. Welcome, Nick. Thanks, Julie. I actually I have a PowerPoint. I'll, so I'll share my screen here. So give me just one second. And so I put together just some slides just to kind of help kind of the conversation go. And, and then I'll take any questions you have, Julie, at the end. I'll, I'll start out talking a little bit about my family. Um, so I have uh, my wife, Amy. We're in Pickerington, Ohio. That's where we live and reside now. So just east of Columbus. We have two boys, Andrew, who's five, almost six. He's the one in the red sweater. And Albert, who's two and a half. Um, and then we talk about um, brotherhood and, and high school. You know, I still have two very good close friends from high school, and they're gonna they're gonna kill me for uh, talking about them on this uh, in this interview. But Dan Ross, who I graduated with, on the right side, uh, class of 2006, and Julie, you may remember Dan and Matt, and then Matt Ross on the left. This is at Matt's wedding back in 2015. I had the honor to serve in his wedding as a groomsman. So I just you know I, these two guys, they they really. Um, helped me get through high school, and um, and I'm so thankful for their friendship still to this day. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I've spent close to a decade uh, career in state government um, for um, in government politics here in Columbus. Um, I've always had an interest in working in politics and government since junior of high school, and and really, you know, Matt and Dan are the catalyst for that. Um, they are the ones that got me first interested in, in the news and, and wanting to learn more about what's going on in the world and our country. So I thank them to this day uh, for all of that. And, um, and originally, I was actually going to be a music major when I went to high school, but then I changed course ending my, in my senior year and decided to go into political science. Um, I've always had a passion for public service, as you'll see as I kind of go through my, uh, my timeline of career, and just I always want to be helpful to people in a meaningful way. Um, so I graduated from Carroll in 2006. Uh, I attended Bowling Green State University where I received my bachelor's in political science and then I went on to get my master's in public administration. Um, while I was in college, uh, I did a couple internships, one with Congressman Bob Latta in his district office uh, in up at Bowling Green and then I interned for Congressman Steve Austria when he was in Congress, who was also the CHS alumnus, uh, class of 77. I looked that up, make sure I had that right. And uh, and so I got, and that was in his DC office. So I got to, to learn about what Congress was like, both uh, in the district, but also in DC. And they were two very different experiences. Um, but I really got my start uh, in state government when I moved to Columbus in 2013. Um, where I was started as a Legislative Service Commission Fellow, was LSC Fellow. And what that is, is it's a government, uh, state government program where they select 24 people to work in the house, state house, the Ohio House or the Ohio Senate. And um, you, learn, you learn about all the different um, facets of the legislature. Um, so I got to work uh, in a budget year, so the operating budget. And so what was really neat about that was I was working on, I got to work on the transportation budget and the chairman of that committee was from Springfield at the time. And uh, was so what's really neat about that budget was, uh, was the speed limit issue. And so when we, it was the year that we upped the speed limit to 70. And so when I, so, no, so when now when I'm driving on the highway down back to Beaver Creek to see my parents, uh, you know, I see the 70 speed limit sign and I know that I got to help kind of work on that. I had a small hand, but got to help work on that legislation that passed um, that speed limit change. So that was really neat and really cool to see. Uh, so yeah, that 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 marked. Uh, so that was about a year program, um, and they, you know, what it is is after you graduate from college, um, you know, they hire those who graduate from college to go on to that program. So if that's interest to students, you know, happy to help connect in that path. Um, after I finished my fellowship. Uh, I had the opportunity to serve as a, as a legislative aide and a senior legislative aide at the Ohio House of Representatives. Um, I was with, I started with Representative Terry Blair actually during my fellowship. And then after I finished that, he hired me on. Um, and I was with him for just over a year. And then he passed away while he was in office as a state rep. Uh, so then I got, and I had the opportunity to go and work for, um, Speaker Pro Temp Matt Hoffman at the time, who's now the Senate President in the Ohio Senate. 
um, as his senior legislative aide. And so I was with him for his last five or six months. And, um, and then I had the, then, uh, Representative Hoffman asked me to work for his cousin, Steve Hoffman, who was just north of him, uh, or just north of uh, Representative Blair's district in the Tip City area. So I kind of got to work on the I-75 line for members in the House. And what was neat about um, working for them was was just the different types of issues I, I got to work on. So so Terry Blair was the, was the chairman of the State Local Government Committee. So I got to work on state and local government issues. Um, and then... Matt Huffman, he worked on, he was a lawyer, so there was a lot of legal issues that he wanted to work on. There was redistricting that uh, had the opportunity to work on with him. And then Steve Huffman is a doctor, so uh, we had the opportunity to work on healthcare issues. Uh, so that was, so I had three vastly different bosses and three vastly different uh, policy areas that I got to work on with them, which was really neat. Um, so then I was with uh, Representative Huffman, Steve Huffman, for about a year. Uh, and then I had the opportunity to serve in the speaker's office as a senior majority policy advisor. Um, and I got to work on K through 12 and higher education issues, which kind of segues into the next portion of my career. So, but I was, um, I was a policy advisor in the house for about three years. Uh, so I worked on a variety of K-12 issues my, mainly and some higher education issues. Got to work on the K through 12 operating budget um, with, with the uh, house members and so it was really, uh, it was a really challenging job, but it was really rewarding at the same time. You know, I got to work on some private education issues, so that was really neat. And I, I probably used Carol a lot as examples uh, in my past uh, to talk about, you know, issues that came up. So that was really neat, uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then, so then I was there till about the beginning of 2019, and then I moved over to the Department of, or the Ohio Department of Higher Education with Chancellor Gardner and and the DeWine administration to work as their director of legislative affairs. So it was a perfect fit. And I'll talk a little bit about what I do at the, at the, at the uh, department here in a couple of minutes. Um, but yeah, and I've, I've loved it ever since, uh, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to get to work with our Ohio, Ohio colleges and schools, both public and private um, every day and, and, and kind of work through their issues and, and COVID, you know, for sure definitely presented a lot of challenges, you know, to the higher education sector. Uh, not only from testing, but to quarantining and and what do we do with students and how do how are the campuses going to operate from now on and, and remote learning and you know so all those issues so it's really uh, so that's been a really really um, challenging but but interesting time as well and then the last piece of my career and was current is um, in 2019 um, I had the opportunity to run for city council in Pickerington, Ohio. And, uh, and so I ran and I ended up winning. There were three open spots and I came in third uh, out of the five that, that ran in total. Um, and so I started that position in January of 2020. Um, and I serve as the vice chair of the safety committee on council and I'm the council representative of Parks and Rec Board. So that's from our Arbor Day event, that photo from a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, you know, I love it because, and I love this position because it's, um, you know, it's, it's just a way of giving back to the community. You know, there are certain ways, you know, there's definitely a litany of, or many ways that you can give back to your community. But for me, I, I feel like public service and an elected office is a way that I can help people um, kind of, you know, with their issues. And, and that's always something I've always wanted to do. And uh, so I've just really enjoyed it. And I hope to continue to do this as long as I can. Um, and then, so I'll talk a little bit about my role at the at the Department of Higher Education. So I'm my technical title is a legislative liaison. So I, I'm it's sort of a dual role. I work both for Governor Dewine, but also for and his staff, but also for the Chancellor of the Higher Education, so Chancellor Gardner. So, so what I do at, at for my day job or my position is I advocate or lobby um, on behalf of the state agency for policies and positions that impact our agency, you know, both to the General Assembly and our relevant higher education stakeholders. Um, you know, I help create, maintain relationships with both of those entities, you know, to help achieve the best possible outcome for the state of Ohio. Um, you know, I serve as a conduit uh, between the chancellor and the governor's office to help pass along important information relevant to agency initiatives and activities. So right now we're going through our uh, state operating budget for the next two fiscal years. And um, so we've been doing a lot of meetings with 
legislative members, both in the House and Senate, to make sure that um, you know our funding is secured for the next two years to you know to help keep things moving along and help fund our colleges, and universities, and our programs that we want to we want to do for the next two years. And then lastly, you know, I, I do a lot of constituent work, so there's issues that pop up, um, you know, whether it's student debt or um, you know someone's having issues, um, you know, getting you know, getting um, sort of feedback from faculty or, um, you know, or there's issues with their transcripts, you know, there's just a, there's a lot of issues that, that pop up. Um, I we help, you know, I'm, I'm one of the people that help uh, with that issue, with that, you know, portion of our agency as well. Um, and that's, you know, and that's that, Julie, you know, that's me in a nutshell, you know, I know that's really short, but um, you know, but that's my contact information. I'll leave that up there. And, and Julie, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. One question I have has to do with activities you were involved with as a student. Were you involved in youth and government at all? The only political involvement I had in college was um, was with the college Republicans. So I kind of served in some leadership roles there, and then helped with we got to help with some campaigns in college. Um, and so that was kind of my my experience and in government, I guess experience in st student government. Um, but I, you know, and I served as a proxy to to someone on the undergraduate student government. So I was not technically a member, but, you know, a friend of mine asked if, you know, if she couldn't make it to a meeting, I would fill her in her place. And so I did that a couple times. And, but, uh, you know, but reflecting back, I wish I would have, you know, been on student government in college. I think it would have been a, a fruitful experience, but I, you know, being young, I didn't, I did not, take advantage of that at the time. How did Carol help you prepare for your future? So, you know, I, I, I call myself a transfer student because I started in the, in the public school system and, um, and I transitioned over to Carol, you know, when I was a front, you know, in ninth grade, because I, well, for one, my dad was the team doctor for the football team for, you know, a couple, for two, over two decades. And, you know, I went to the games with him growing up. And, and so, um, I thought, I felt like a, I felt a connection to Carol, you know, already. And I remember having that conversation with my dad saying, dad, I want to go to Carol. And he was like, okay, I guess that's okay. And, <laughs> but, you know, through the four years of Carol, you know, whether it was through some of my teachers, you know, you know, with, with either American government or even English or some of the religion classes, I mean, you know, I, the teachers really were, were great to, to work with. And I learned a lot from them. And, um, and even the student body kind of having that experience of, of kind of being in class with, with students from, you know, different walks of life and, um, you know, and different interests, you know, so whether I was in class with the football players or with, um, or with some of the, you know, with some of my more intelligent peers, you know, in the, in the uh, upper classes, you know, I, you know, I learned a lot from them and, um, it's just, you know, I, I felt like the, the community at Carroll was, was great. And, you know, I had no, you know, I didn't have any issues at all. I just, I, I really enjoyed just, just the student body. And I think, I think it really helped. I think that kind of camaraderie really helped prepare me for sort of that kind of future. And, you know, and I was a big band kid, so I did everything with the band. And, um, and so I just, you know, I just, I think being, kind of in those different sort of social, I would say social circles, because I, I try not to be in a social circle, but, you know, just kind of like, I don't know, all over the place and, and kind of getting to know people and and, and this social interactions really helped, I don't know, help prepare me for my future, if that makes sense. <laughs> what are you most proud of professionally? It's both, you know, my, my day, you know, my, both the working in the state government and also at the local level. I mean, I think that having these experiences is has been really rewarding and humbling. Uh, it's just because it's something I I never have would have expected, right? If you were to ask me in senior my senior year of high school, you know, in, in fourteen years you're going to be you know a city councilman and you're going to be you're going to have worked for you know the state house and you know I just. I would have told, I probably would have laughed really loud and said, you're kidding and I don't believe you. And I probably, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just, cause I, for me, like I had no idea what the future was, was to be, what was going to be held to me. And, um, and so I just, you know, for me, it's, it was all about kind of working hard, keeping my head low, um, just trying to learn as much as I can. Uh, just try to do my best at, at 
my job and and see where see where things take me. And so I'm I'm really proud about just kind of the experiences that I've had and just have the honor to be able to do that. What advice would you give to a student uh, trying to get into college? I would say get involved, you know, get involved, you know, whether it's in your community or whether it's in your high school, you know, it, it helps to show that, you know, you, you, you've got some sort of idea of what you want to do in the future, or even if you don't, you know, just trying to, just trying to just kind of just get, keep yourself busy and keep involved, um, you know, and, and, and pick a college that's right for you, right? I mean, you know, I'm not, you know, whether it's a four-year university, you know, in, in Ohio, hopefully, or it's a community college. I mean, you know, community colleges are a great way to get a start. Um, you know, if, if you're not sure about going to a bigger school, you know, go and get your associates and then transfer to a four-year college. Because, you know, I think a lot of times people frown upon community colleges or two years, but, but really, you know, from what I've learned, you know, both working on the policy side, but also it practic you know, practically at the department is that, you know, it's, it's a pathway that people have and, and they shouldn't be scared of. Um, I think that, um, you know, having that pathway to be able to um, talk about, if there be having a pathway to, you know, kind of get, get your start and then move on is good too. But if you don't, if, if that's not your route either, there's also career centers where, you know, you can go into a trade or a skilled labor position. I mean, I mean, I, those are just, I think that it's whatever, it's whatever fits for you and in, in kind of how you feel towards the end of call, eternity ends of high school. It's just, those are your, um, you know, that's kind of the pathway you know, that people can choose. So I think, you know, so I'm not going to say, you know, you need to go to a four-year, you need to go to a two-year, you need to go to career school. I think it's whatever fits for you. And as long as you're kind of advancing yourself to sort of a new level to get that advanced degree or advanced or to get some more education, uh, I think that's always positive. What is your favorite part of your job and the least uh, favorite part of your job? I'm trying to get myself in trouble. So I would say my favorite part of the job is is the interactions I get to have with with a whole variety of people, and um, and so you know you get to meet a lot of a lot of really 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 interesting people. So like working with the state legislature and the and the members there, the, that's really cool and really neat. And I try not to take any of that for granted because it's a because I'm kind of in a niche a niche job a niche niche job you know, and, and so it's kind of a unique job. It's hard to describe because my parents don't even understand what I do and sometimes. And uh, and so, but I, I really like, I really value like the, the ability to be able to make connections with folks and to help kind of advance, you know, make progress in Ohio. Um, my least favorite part about my job, you know, there's a lot of ebb and flow to the position, right? You know, there are high, you know, there are busy days and slow days and, um, you know, and sometimes there are issues that pop up that you just don't want to deal with, but you have to. So I would say, you know, sometimes when those issues kind of pop up, that's my least favorite part of the job, but, you know, but helping work towards a solution is always a good thing. It's hard. I just really like my job. So I guess it's hard to pick a least favorite piece of that's it. That's great. You mentioned a little bit about COVID. Um, can you go into more detail as far as how, how that has impacted your job? So I've been working from home since last March. Um, I actually just started going to the state house a couple months ago for to just for some meetings and um, but it's been really just really bizarre to to work from home and it's become kind of a normal now. And so when we go back to the office, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. And uh, you know, I've been in my office a few times now, but it's been really strange. It has shown statewide, I mean, just, just even with like the state agencies, like it has shown actually a lot more efficiency with state government, with, state, with the state agencies, at least from my perception and from what I've heard. So, and what the future holds for state government is, you know, I'm not sure, but um, it's, it's, it remains to be seen. But, you know, I think for my job, it's been really difficult because, um, you know, because my job really does feed off those interactions with our stakeholders and with the members and with staff. Um, and so I've, I feel like I've missed out on a year of that sort of networking, that sort of that year of connecting with folks. And so that's been really difficult. You know, you can do it over the phone or over Zoom, um, but it's it's not the same, you know, and I, I had to do, you know, there were 20 new, 21 new members in the house this year and I did all my meetings through Zoom, but that, 
but it was different. Like it was a kind of a different interaction. And so it was it kind of makes, it makes my job a little bit more difficult. And, uh, but I made me and we made it work. And um, it's just, it's, I think it just takes a little bit extra work to kind of, you know, to keep, keep the connections going. And that's just been, that's been the difficult part. What would you say is the key to getting along with coworkers? Be nice, you know, I think that, and be respectful. I mean, I think that, you know, we don't know what people are going through, right? And so, you know, and we hear this a lot where, you know, you don't know what your coworker is going through. Maybe they're having a really rough time. And, you know, if you come in, you barge in and you start making jokes or you, um, you know, or, or people will just, or some people are more introverted than others or more, or some people just, you know, they have different work ethics. I mean, it's just all about being respectful and, and, and just having an understanding of like, okay, where are your boundaries at? And I can't push them. And, uh, and so, cause I think a lot of times people like, like in people in my position, you know, I get this, there's the stigma of this guy is going to be very egocentric and very like bombastic and very, you know, over the top and drama and like, you know, just, just, just all the negative things. And so, you know, I try to break that stigma because I, for me, like I'm all about teamwork and making sure that we all can meet a common end and common goal. Um, so I think it's just, so with coworkers, like it's been interesting. I'll just say this at the house, um, you know, all the coworkers are in their young twenties, you know, the majority of them, right. Large majority. I moved over to the department and all my coworkers are in their forties and fifties, you know? And so, and I'm probably one of the younger one, younger staff members of the department, you know, I'm 32 now. And so it, that was a, that was a complete mind shift, uh, you know, in terms of how to treat coworkers, but, but I was met with a lot of positivity you know, and, and a lot of really, you know, a lot of really nice staff and, um, you know, and they were very help, helpful and cordial to kind of getting acclimated to the, you know, to the department. So, I mean, I think that it's just sort of, it's adapting to, to, to just different situations as well. But yeah, but like I said, be respectful and be courteous and, and just be mindful of, of where, you know, where your coworker may be coming from and, you know, and, and how they're doing and those types of things mentally, physically, emotionally. I know you mentioned um, you mentioned about your career, your college path. Um, do you feel like the path you took was the the best path to have a have a career in politics? Do you have advice for a, a student as far as what path they should take? That's a really good question, um, and that's something I like think about often because you know there are things you know because maybe I did mess up somewhere down the line or you know and or is this just sheer luck or is it I don't know what it is you know I, I I still try to figure out how how where I am and how I got here honestly I'm still trying to figure all that out if you have an idea of what you want to do I should say pursue it but should I have gotten more involved in college probably you know I I was a you know, I did curling. So I was at like the Olympic sport, you know, Olympic ice sport. I was very involved with that. Should I have gotten more involved politically in, col in college? Probably, um, or, you know, whether doing government or, or more thing, you know, things of that nature, you know, cause I, cause there are people that I meet and they have this resume coming out of college and it is just absolutely astounding. And should I have done more community work in college? Probably, you know, it's like, so, you know, there are a lot of things that I wish I I, I should have done or could have done, you know, that were probably more kind of community minded or focused or just actively engaged on campus. I think, I feel like the more you're involved in some, in things, you know, the more you're going to get a, a better, a well, well-rounded education, but also more, more well-rounded mindset for how the world works. And so that's just, that would be my advice is just, just get involved, you know, find things that interest you and just, just pursue it. What does a typical work day look like? Pre-COVID, uh, you know, I work downtown, so just commuting into work, um, you know, if it was a Tuesday or a Wednesday, let's take that for example, you know, I would be at the state house, uh, meeting with members or staff, having coffee, you know, catching up, things like that, trying to learn about different bills or different things that they're trying to pursue, um, working with our staff on different policy issues that are popping up, um, trying to douse fires, you know, here and there, um, just trying, and so a lot of meetings and, a lot of researching and reading on different policy items. Uh, so that's kind of my, my day in and day out. 
I would say. And then when I get home, it's all about the family. <laughs> the uh, last words of final advice for students? You know, well, first, thank you for the opportunity. This is really, really, this is awesome. Um, I, you know, I never would imagine that I'd be doing something like this. So thank you. Um, I would say, you know, I always tell people, like, I'll tell, like, my good advice to people is, like, life is like a blank slate. And, you know, like I tell like the new LSC fellows, because I got to be their mentors, you know, while I was at the house. And I always told them, you know, you know, day one here is like a blank slate in that you're writing your history. You know, you're writing your career history. Every day is a job interview. Um, so, you know, so when you leave high school or you go to college or do what what you want to do, um, just remember that life is a blank slate and you're 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 writing the path that you want to be on. And so you know, I always, I always envision, this sounds really silly. I always envision Fred Flintstone and, and like the Flintstones movie and he's got this slate tablet and he's pounding away. And I just, that's the image I have when I talk about a blank slate, because, you know, you're, because you're, you're literally writing your own history and, and you have to kind of, and you need to wonder what, what, you know, what do you want to do and, and how do you want your history to be? And you're like, you know, not legacy, but what did you want, what do you want your personal history to be kind of when you leave this world? And so, you know, those are just some words of advice that I have. Thank you so much, Nick, for being You're with welcome. us Thank today. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, um, have a great day. Thank you. Thank let you. me know you if uh, anybody needs anything. I'm happy to okay. be out resource.